and just a lot of sweat. <laughs> That's what it is like to be a character. How Welcome back everyone. It is time for another Sunday story time here in front of the red sofa. And you know what? This is the 20th video that I've made in the series since I started, you know, like sitting here in front of the couch and chatting with you guys. 20, I've made 20 of them now. I can't believe it. And um, I'm so happy that you guys are, are interested in this and I'm interested in it too. But after 20 story times, I'm gonna take a little bit of a hiatus from this format and um, the next couple of weeks on Sunday, I'm gonna be uploading different kind of videos and uh, you'll see what they are when they come. But Sunday story time will be returning, but just the next few weeks, uh, I wanna make a different format of videos from here in front of the red sofa, okay? So look forward to that because I'm looking forward to it too. Today's Sunday story time is something I've been talking about for a few weeks now, and it is finally time to tell you the story about what it was like to work as a character parade performer at Disney World. This um, story could be very complex because there's so many different um, aspects of the experience, and I'm gonna try to tell you what it, like what it was like to actually do the job. But, um, of course, <laughs> I'm gonna fill it up with interesting facts and details. Um, first of all, um, in order to get a job as a character parade performer, you have to audition. And um, when I was a cast member at Disney, this was like, it's more than 20 years ago now. So I'm assuming that several of these things have changed. However, I know that some of them are still very similar. And in order to be a character parade performer, at least um, um, at the time, you had to audition. And it was a very simple, uh, first of all, you um, introduced yourself, and then we had a very simple um, choreography we had to learn, like a dance combination, and we did that in groups. And then um, some of us had to learn a more complicated one, and we did that in groups, and um, and then they did uh, measurements. They measured how tall we were, and they measured certain things on our, our bodies, like the distance of, you know, like our shoulders and things like that. And some people had to try on wigs to see if they fit into like certain face character um, things. And then after that was over, then we found out who was getting the job or not. At the time, I was offered the job that same day, and um, it was a really, really special moment in my life, of course. Um, but I think other times they collect all the information and then they call people later. Anyways, um, I was hired to be a seasonal character parade performer for the Christmas season. And it was, the year was 1994. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's how long ago it was. And um, everybody who began at as a cast member at Disney at the time, had to go through a program called Traditions. And it's like um, learning about the history of the company and learning about like certain things that every Disney cast member should, um, should know about and should think about when they're on the job, regardless of what position they hold, in order to um, maintain this extremely high level of customer service that Disney is known for. And I still have my traditions stuff from back then. It says here, Welcome to a world of dreams, a kingdom full of magical things. Every wish will come true. Everything you'll ever do brings a smile big as the moon, a happy ever after world. Walt Disney World is your world. And um, in here, there's all sorts of information about um, yeah, these, I don't know, these are the things that we went through and that we had to learn about. And at the time, everybody who worked at Disney had to go through this. And I think it was a week long. And I know that since, since then, it's been short. So after that was done, um, then we, then everybody who had traditions, um, you know, then the week after that, you started going off into your own department and learning about the things that you had to know about um, to do your job. And um, as a character parade performer, it's of course, it's a lot different than if you're working 
in food and beverage or if you're working um, at the gate or you know things like that so the first thing that we did is um, we learned about the actual things that you had to do like the places that you had to go in order to get ready for a day and there's two different things that character parade performers do at least at the time we did the parade shows of course so like you know the three o'clock parade um and also the the nighttime parade spectral magic or electric uh what's it called again electric light parade oh my gosh i'm embarrassed that i can't think of what it's called electric light parade right jeez sorry um so if you're doing a show that's like one sort of um routine and if you're doing character greetings that's another routine and when i was there usually um i did both in one day and some of those days were really long days but um so i'm gonna skip a whole bunch of like training and steps that we had to go to until we were approved to um to like be in the parade or approved to take on a uh, character greeting shift and just tell you like what a typical day would be like um, if I was doing a character greeting and the parade. All right, so we would get the schedule and um, as a uh, temporary seasonal parade performer, I uh, of course was not full time. So my hours kind of went up and down um, depending on uh, how many other people were there, how many people were sick, if people had, you know, like paid leave and stuff like that. We were there to sort of pick up all those things. And of course, around Christmas time, um, there's just a lot of extra things going on. And so they need extra people to fill all the spots. And what I did most, I think the where I got my, most of my hours was um, the character breakfast at the Wilderness Lodge, which I don't think is offered anymore. I don't know. So... If I was doing character breakfast, then I would have to get up at the butt crack of dawn and uh, to get to the work on time. I don't remember what time it was, but it was early. So let's say I had to be at the character zoo at like, I wanna say like six o'clock in the morning and Oh, that's just early. That means like, you know, waking up at like 5 or 4.30. I don't even remember. Jeez, I should try to find out. I don't have any information about that anymore. But, um, so, and like I said, this is what it was like 20 years ago. If I was doing a character breakfast at the Wilderness Lodge, I still had to go to the character zoo underneath the Magic Kingdom to get my costume. And, you know, I'm destroying all the magic here and talking about, you know, what it's like to be a character parade performer. I mean, I was a character. I performed in these big furry suits. And most of the time I was Chip or Dale, one of the chipmunks. And uh, so first of all, to, um, to check in, we had to go to, um, to the Magic Kingdom cast area. And the entrance, the parking lot is behind the Magic Kingdom. And then we would get in a bus that would pick us up from there and drive us to the entrance uh, underneath the Magic Kingdom, which is now um, like underneath the Be Our Guest restaurant back there in Fantasyland. So that's where we would um, clock in. And then we had to go to what's called, or what was called the Character Zoo back then. And if any of you are cast members now or have been cast members recently and can like tell me about how it's all set up now, I would love to hear it. So please. Um, write it in the comments below or get in touch with me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Um, so then we would go to the character zoo and have to say, hi, I'm Morgan, I'm going to the Wilderness Lodge and I need Chipmunk or, you know, I need Chip or Dale or whatever. And they would ask then, you know, shoe size and things like that. And then there were certain like little aspects of the costumes that are somewhat different. You know, like some of them had like a padded thing inside the head and some of them had a non-padded thing inside the head. At least this is how I remember it back then. And so you could say, I need like, um, I need a chip, uh, shoe size, um, six and a half and a uh, non-padded head, please. And, uh, and then so they would bring all the pieces and then you'd sort of like inspect it to just make sure that everything was cool because if something wasn't right, 
you know, once you're at the Wilderness Lodge, you have no way to like fix it. You know what I mean? And um, at the time they gave us uh, like, uh, you know, like sweat, uh, sweat shorts and a t-shirt. And so then we'd take uh, the, the bulky parts of the costume, the head and the fur and the feet and the hands, they would all get put in this huge sack, just like a huge gray sack. And, um, and so that is what, uh, you would take it like literally over your shoulder, you know, like a, like a hobo. And, um, then I would go to the dressing rooms and then I would change out of my normal clothes and put on the Disney, um, sweat shorts and, uh, t-shirt because you sweat a lot in these things. And, um, it just would be stupid if you were wearing your own clothes because then you would be totally sweaty you know, at the end of the day. All right, so after that was all set up, then there was, um, depending on what your location was, uh, there was like a, like a supervisor that you'd meet up and they would, um, like everybody who was gonna be then on that shift. So like when we were doing um, Wilderness Lodge, I think we were like five or six people. Um, so it was like the chipmunks and there was usually like one face character like, um, I think it was like Alice. I don't remember exactly. But, um, and then of course, always a Minnie or Mickey or both. And so we would all meet up with our um, supervisor or um, yeah, shift leader or whoever. I don't remember what it was called. And then we would go to the transportation, which would take us from the back of the Magic Kingdom over to the Wilderness Lodge. People, I think people don't understand how complex the transportation system is at Disney. Not only are, is there the monorail and then the resort buses for the guests, and now they have these mini vans, but there also is an entire transportation system just to move cast members around. Uh, so we were in then a separate van that took us with our big sacks and our shift leader or supervisor, whatever it was called, over to the Wilderness Lodge. And then we would literally walk through the Wilderness Lodge in our shorts and t-shirt with our big sacks to the dressing room. And when I say dressing room, at the time it wasn't like a real, you know, like a dressing room like backstage in a theater. It was like, I think a small conference room actually. So, but there were always um, tables set up and there was water for us and things like that. And, um, and that's where then we would like chill. Uh, because you were always on stage, at least at the time, if I remember it correctly, we were on stage for a half an hour and then off stage for a half an hour and then on stage for a half an hour and off stage for a half an hour. And if you were at an outside location, um, depending on the temperature, the on stage time was shortened just because it's rough. I mean, you're wearing like a, like a 30 pound fur suit. And if it's literally a hundred degrees outside, I mean, that's like... That's like torture, you know, but there's something really awesome about it. And I'm going to get to that. Um, all right. So we would, um, yeah, get together in this little, uh, dressing room area. And then we would put on the costume and not all characters were in the restaurant at one time. So the supervisor or whatever would be like, all right, let's let's uh, let's start with the chipmunks. And so we get suited up and then we'd go out and make a round through the restaurant. And then we, when we were done, we'd come back to the restaurant and then like Mickey and Minnie would go out. And that's when then we would have our little, um, you know, our half an hour break and, you know, drink water. And I mean, at the time, this is what's strange now. At the time, I mean, there wasn't things like smartphones or iPads or anything like that. So when we had breaks, we sat there and we like talked to each other. Imagine that. And we like played Uno and read the newspaper. Hard to imagine that nowadays, isn't it? And then, uh, you know, a character breakfast would then go until like, I don't know when, until like 10, 10, 30, 11, maybe. And then after the last um, round through the restaurant, then we would, um, yeah, we take off the, the character costume, put it back in the sack and then um, take the transportation back to um, the character zoo in the Magic Kingdom. And then we'd have to check in our costume again. So we would um, literally like, you know, take the pieces out and say like, here's the head, here's the hands, here's the shoes, here's the body. And um, if there was any problems with it, you know, like if something 
seemed to not be working right or something broken or, or something had broke or ripped, then you'd tell the person as you're giving that to them um, because you wanted to make sure that the costume is um, in good shape for the next person who wears it. And then, um, and then usually there was a little bit of time at the end of the shift that you had to um, like get, uh, get out of the, you know, the sweaty sweatpants stuff and back into near your normal clothes or take a shower. I never took a shower there. Um, they had, a, it was like a big locker room, you know, like at a, like at a fitness studio, but like huge. And um, I know that some people did take a shower there, but I didn't back then. And when I think back to it now, that's crazy. I can't imagine after doing a shift like that, not taking a shower now, because I mean, it was like, what was it then? It was like, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning and I still had the whole day in front of me. And I just can't imagine being that sweaty and not wanting to take a shower now. I think back then it was more about just being shy and not wanting to like, I don't know, be naked in this locker room, but it would be different. It's different for me now. I mean, you guys know that. You've seen my videos about going to nude beach and stuff like that. So anyways, um, so if I was just doing the breakfast, then my day would be done then. But if I was um, doing the parade or if it was, um, if we had the Christmas show that night, then usually um, I had then like lunch. And um, there was the employee cafeteria, which was right down in that area by um, the, um, by the character zoo um, with discounted food. Or if I had enough time and I was um, clocked out for lunch, then I could put on my normal clothes and go up to um, the park and eat whatever I wanted in the park. And I'm sure we got a little bit of a discount for that too. And so many times, of course, in the breaks, if we had enough time, we would put on our normal clothes, clock out and go up and ride a ride. And it was great because we could get through the park really easily because even if we were in our normal clothes, we could still walk through the utilidors under the park. And so like you could get to Frontierland or to Tomorrowland much quicker than walking through the crowded park by just going under the park and then going up. Uh, so that was, that was cool. I remember really enjoying that and being like, oh, this is cool. This is my job. And on my lunch break, I get to ride Space Mountain. I mean, how many, how many people have the opportunity to do something like that on their lunch break? So then after lunch, if um, I was doing the parade, then the whole thing started again. Then I would get new uh, sweats, um, pick up the costume for whatever I was doing in the parade, and usually it was a chipmunk. Sometimes it was the white rabbit from Alice, and a few times I was a dwarf as well. And um, same process, go to the character zoo, tell them what you're doing, they give you the costume, put it in a big sack. And then if it was a parade, um, there were several buses that were going from where the, you know, like the character zoo is, um, back to where the parade starts, um, which is behind um, Splash Mountain and um, Frontierland, um, Splash Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain. Uh, and maybe, you know what? I think there was like, I wanna say there was like three times. So. If you missed the last bus, and this happens sometimes, <laughs> then you were responsible to walk the whole way with your costume um, back to where the parade started. What's that place called again? Parade Central, I wanna say? I don't remember exactly. And so you would have to go under the park, up um, to uh, like behind Main Street, and then walk this long way behind where the Jungle Cruise is, and that was the way to get to um, where the parade started if you missed the bus or for whatever reason you just didn't want to take the bus. And I know that I did that sometimes. And um, back there, there's also like dressing areas and that's where all the rehearsal rooms are as well. And that's where we would um, get in costume or they would say get in fur. And we would get then on the floats or get in the areas between the floats depending on what you were doing. And then, when the parade started, that's where we, you know, we left. And then the parade would go through the park, of course, and end on Main Street. And then we would all go through the, um, the firehouse. And then there's this big area there where, um, where the buses would be waiting. And uh, there's also a huge, like, cool-down facility there. Um, you know how there's, like, in some areas of the park, 
they have these misty things. Well, there's like a huge row of those back there because on a hot day, like when the parade is over, you're like literally like, it's like being in a sauna, but then dancing in a sauna, you know, like full out for like 35, 40 minutes. You know, what does it take for the parade to start there, go through the park and end there? Some, I mean, and I was there in the winter. So the, the weather in the winter is, you know, not as harsh as it is in the summer. And gosh, those people work really hard. That's what I can tell you. Um, you don't make a lot of money uh, and you work so hard and you get no glory because nobody really sees who you are. Even if you're a face character, character they see, you know, Peter Pan or, or Belle or whoever. They don't see you. So it's like very little glory, not a lot of pay, and just a lot of sweat. <laughs> That's what it is like to be a character. However, here's the thing that I thought was so fantastic about it. Uh, and it has to do with the character greetings. When you go out into the park or when you have a character greeting, you get so much love from the people that you encounter. Like I said, they're not seeing you. They're seeing, you know, Mickey or they're seeing, you know, Roger Rabbit or whoever. And they're so happy to see you. And the parents and especially the kids, I don't know how to explain it. They just like you stand there and group after group after group just come in and send you love. And and it really is a great thing to experience. Um, like I said, it's not coming at you directly, but you receive it. I know that sounds really like, you know, transcendental or whatever, but literally at the end of those character greeting shifts, especially like the breakfast or in the parks, I just was in such a good mood because everybody wants to hug you. Everybody wants to, you know, be close to you and get a picture with you. And it just feels so good. And I swear, it's like a cure for depression because, like I said, I just felt so good at the end of those days and I would love to do it again. Maybe somehow I'll find a way. Um, but so that was, um, that was like one huge bonus of the hard work, the sweat, and the not necessarily great pay was just this great feeling of you know, being a, a magical part of these people's vacation and know that when those kids, you know, got to hug you or got to get their picture taken with you or something, it literally like changes their lives forever. And they go and they talk about the time that, you know, at breakfast, uh, Chip and Dale stole their pancake or, you know what I mean? Like that's something that they'll talk about forever and they'll remember any time they think of their trip to Disney. And to just be involved in that, it was so special. And uh, I, I loved it. And, you know, like I said in, in another one of my story times, I'm pretty sure that if I didn't have such terrible roommates back then, I probably would still be there now. Or at least I would have stayed much longer than I did. All right, there's, like I said, there's so many more aspects about what it was like to work there um, and what like the training was like uh, and the different opportunities. Um, and I'm sure I'll be telling those in, in upcoming story times um, when I start doing story times again. But for today, that's the end of the story. And uh, thanks for hanging out. Like I said, if you have been a character performer since like in the last 20 years, um, and you can talk about like some things being similar or different to what it was when I was there, please uh, write it in the comments below or get in touch. And as always, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Very special thanks to all my VIP Patreons over at Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash very unofficial. And um, uh, sometime during this week, I'll be uploading another video from uh, my cruise on the Norwegian Epic. And then next weekend, I will be back here in front of the red sofa with another type of video. So look forward to that too. Have a great rest of your Sunday and I'll see you soon.